All right, so for today's lesson, I wanted just to go over with you guys some very troubling footage of cringe hip-hop podcaster Bootleg Kevin and known fraud Sharp Rob for having an extremely disingenuous conversation, which really bothered me, and it equated uh, to, to me boldface lying to their audience in some sort of attempt to conceal the weirdness and silliness of Sharp Rob's hilariously stupid background. But before I show you that, I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed on who Bootleg Kev is and what he's actually known for. And so Bootleg Kev is actually a massive weirdo. He is a Caucasian hip-hop podcaster with a background in radio from Arizona. And he is sort of, people know him because he has the shittiest podcast in the history of time but still manages to secure interviews with A-list guests. And this is, in my opinion, what he's known for. He's known for being this mysterious guy who is the ultimate in ass when it comes to podcasting, but still attracts guests. I mean, usually this is the way it works. You have a, a, an interview show that does a lot of numbers and has a lot of loyal viewership and, and it has good ratings. And this attracts uh, artists to that show so they can be, you know, get some of that exposure to promote themselves in front of a large audience. Well, Bootleg Kev doesn't have a large audience at all. Bootleg Kev has, I mean, it's funny how low his numbers are. It's like a joke, okay? So everyone that I know has been asking, you know, who's this guy? Is he an industry plant? Like, how is he getting these interviews? We just saw him sit down with NBA Youngboy in this, like, groundbreaking interview. Why does he, I don't understand. So, I mean, I've seen uh, hundreds of way better uh, YouTube shows that do the same thing he does and they're way better than him, but for some reason he gets all the guests and his show is the ultimate in fucking ass. I mean, he, he go watch it, go subscribe to his show and go watch it. Tell me what you think. But anyways, I've covered him. I've always thought he was a f extreme weirdo. He's all he, you know. I've caught him talking about a uh, nine-year-old bedroom talk. So when you're fucking at nine, how long you last, bro? It didn't last long because uh, my brother walked in. I was gonna say, you're, are you like, did you you did you finish? No, I didn't. Mean, I am. She kept saying, "Don't come, don't come." Did she have to like kind of show you what to do? No, nah, no, nah, you knew. I kind of. I, I was. I was. I've caught him. Uh, this is one of my favorites talking to this 16 year old rapper about having a sugar mama and encouraging it and all this shit. A, a 44 year old sugar mama. Watch this. Because like, there's going to be women trying to statutory the fuck out of you shortly. Try. Yeah, like, like, right. Like, there's a lot of like grown ass women DMing me like all the time, like talking about, oh, I want to do this. I want to give you this. I want to give you that. You trying to get a sugar mama popping? I don't know. Woman was, she offered me 5,000. And all I had to do what? was like FaceTime with her like once a week for a month. She said she was not. Nah, she was 44. She was 44. She was wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. A 44 year old woman DM'd you? She DM'd me on Instagram and she said, I'll give you $5,000. All you got to do is accompany me once a week on FaceTime. And you said no? No. I took the $5,000 and I oh. blocked her and I gave my girl $2,500. Hey, you're a real one. What? So, the, so you guys can see that this guy is actually a weird little man and so uh, i just wanted to show you guys that to preface this this uh, lesson because i think it's important so i want to so th this is what the video is about the video is not about him or his success it's about sharp it's about his conversation he had with sharp and about how they're like trying to conceal sharp's background of being like this ultra cringy front man of this uh boy band rap group from, you know, uh, meth town Vegas. And it's just really, really just embarrassing for sharp, uh, to talk about. And so they're going to talk about it and uh, bootleg Kev helps. I don't, I don't want to give too much away. I gotta, we gotta, we gotta go to our first clip here. This is going to be bootleg Kev interrogating sharp about where he's actually from. Because as we all know, Sharp says he's from San Diego. He claims San Diego, says he's from there, he says he's from the streets, he's a real G, everything else. Call Dago. So I thought it was really interesting to hear someone actually interrogate him on where he's actually from and get down to the bottom of it. And this is all going to be important later on. So I want you guys to really pay attention to what's going on here in this first clip. And everything will start to make sense in, in the miracle of time. So let's begin with our first clip. This is Bootleg Kev. Asking Sharp where the fuck he is from. So were you originally from San Diego or Vegas? No, I'm originally from Detroit. Okay, originally from you Detroit. Saying, yeah, How long have you been to in West Vegas? Coast? Shit, man, my mama moved me to the West Coast when I was probably like two, one and a half, two. So when I was in, so being born in Detroit, I never, uh, 
like I like I said, I can't tell you no streets or nothing out there. Right, I can't of course, tell you of course, of course. I never lived out there, of but course. I moved to the West Coast. And like I said, man, shit, all my people been taking me to Dago shit since I was like 12, 13. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Start riding with my homies and then shit, you know, I kind of got a lot of my season from around there, you know, especially bouncing back from both places, you know what I'm saying? Because Vegas is fast just within itself. Vegas is crazy, you man. You know what I'm saying? I was there, main shit, before some of the casinos got tore down. No, was Vegas is front. wild. Yeah, no, for sure, man. It's so bootleg Kevin corners him and goes, so are you originally from Vegas or San Diego? And he goes, I'm originally from Detroit. Uh, no, you're not. You know, people can't, you can't say, you know, where you're from is where you grew up, where you came of age, where you spent your adolescenthood. You're not allowed to say that you're from two places unless you like have parents that like split time between the two. Or if you like moved, uh, you know, between middle school and high school, moved to a new city and like and like dominantly lived there. But that's extremely rare. Usually you have a dominant place where you grew up, where you went to high school, where you lost your virginity, shit like that. But even if you have that type of situation, you just explain that. It's very simple. You say, yeah, I moved there. You know, my pops lived over here. So I, you know, we split the time. So I, you know, I grew up. He didn't say that. Okay. Sharp says that he just used to go there a lot. My people used to take me to my people used to take me there from time to time. So I'm from San Diego now. Okay, that's a crock of shit. That's not what anyone says. And so Sharp doesn't want to be from Vegas. He wants to be from he, at all costs. He's like, no, I'm not even originally from Vegas. I'm from Detroit. No, you're from originally from Vegas. You fucking idiot. I really can't stand people who uh, who lie like this. This is lying to me. How is this not lying? He's saying he's from Detroit because he was born there. I was, uh, yeah, I grew up there till I was like one or two. So I guess you could say I'm from Detroit. But yeah, so Vegas was cool. But yeah, I'm from San Diego. And Sharp's from Vegas. He used to vacation in San Diego just like everybody else. And so, uh, and people are like, why would he lie? Why would he do that? That's so weird and cringe. I'm going to show you. I mean, out of, out of his own mouth, he's so stupid that he actually explains why he doesn't claim where he's from. I'm mean, going to show you right now. Watch this. People don't know, like, Neo's from Vegas. I think yeah. he went to Rancho. Yeah, he like, went to Rancho. And, like, I'm like, yo, yeah. you would never know that because Neo don't really rep Vegas. Like, you, no. would, you know what I mean? But like, it was on his ID one time when he got pulled over in a little prank, like, little shit. And right. And pulled out his ID. And it says, why does it say North Las Vegas? But he was claiming L.A. Yeah. He was like, oh, I went to school there. Like, nobody, nobody really, I don't know. I just don't get that part of it, bro. Like. If you know what I'm saying, like I, I got love for man Dago and Vegas, like, but if you could show some love, man, like don't show some love. Let them know where you're from, man. Let them know where where your background come from. But everybody always try to hide it, like they hiding something. I don't, yeah. I don't get that part. Like you could tell your story, like why why hide something? If you want to be from L.A., hey, all right, go ahead and say that. Hey, I'm from here, but by way of here, do whatever you do, but just yeah. keep that shit a man. 100%. Man. All right, so there you have it. Sharp criticizing Neo for being a Las Vegas native that doesn't claim Las Vegas and wants people to believe that he's from LA. Okay, this is the exact same thing Sharp's doing, but it with San Diego. I mean, why not put some shine? You know, he's he's famous for being a pimp. Why not hail from Vegas? That could be like, I mean, I don't understand. So Sharp is a massive hypocrite. He's from Vegas. He's uh, not putting shine on his slogan is called Dago. Okay, I think his slogan should be called Vago. That's way better because he's actually from Vegas. He's not from San Diego. Exactly. If you're going to call Dago, call Dago. Is this making sense? I mean, I really hope this is making sense because what's uh, coming right now is going to really bother you guys, I hope. Um, this is going to be Bootleg Kev disingenuously asking Sharp questions that he already knows the answer to. Bootleg Kev already knows that Sharp is a failed rapper that rapped for years and years and believed that he was going to blow up and become like they were going to be the new Vegas version of Dipset or some shit. So uh, Bootleg Kev, and I want you guys to watch Bootleg Kev's mannerisms because this is very deceptive. He's touching his face. Every time Bootleg Kev does something deceptive, he touches his face, he scratches his nose, he does something with his face. And it's really a huge tell. I'd like to play poker with this guy someday. But I want to show you this clip. This will, I want you guys to pay very close attention. Watch this. I touched the microphone and I ain't left yet. Hmm. Did you ever try? Did you ever rap? For a little bit. But okay. I did it because it was like a release. Like, I liked it because it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can go talk my shit on it. But, like, I never really. I feel like you'd be it, like it a cool. natural dope rapper. It, like. it was it was cool, man. But, you know, trying to do it within a group, you know, and just with people or things like You're that. You've always been a good team player. You know what I'm saying? Like, always been like, yeah, just with some of my people. Right, right, right. And just always been a good team player. But, you know, 
motherfuckers don't always play like that. So, you know, things always, you know, break up. And I was just like, man, I just, I think it kind of beat me out of it. Like, I was like, I How many tried years a were bit. you trying? Probably like three. Three years? Shit. Yeah, like I three. Mean, not, yeah. In I Vegas? Mean, yeah. That Vegas rap scene is lit, bro. I it's love cool. it out there. No, it's cool. Bootleg Kevin already knows, but he's uh, helping Sharp conceal his past because he doesn't want to embarrass his guest. He's he's like a suck up. He's a kiss ass. He's not one of these uh, interviewers like Vlad TV that's actually going to ask the tough questions and make people explain themselves. Bootleg Kev does the exact opposite. He knows that Sharp is a failed rapper from a hilariously bad rap group from Vegas, but he doesn't want to put that on blast. He want because he, he knows that it'll embarrass Sharp. So he's worried about embarrassing Sharp. He wants Sharp to be a cool guest. So he's helping Sharp conceal. He's like giving Sharp an opportunity to maybe tell the truth. But if Sharp doesn't tell the truth, he's going to go with the lie also. And I've got a huge problem with that. I think people need to be called out to their face. And so a lot of you are probably wondering like, how does the sheriff even know that bootleg Kev knows Sharp's background? Like how does he, I mean, he's bootleg Kev's from Arizona, I thought. Sharps from San Diego, I thought. Well, I'm going to show you a clip that will blow the doors off of the whole thing, and you guys will understand why I'm saying all these things, that bootleg Kev knows Sharp, knows who he is, where he's from, what his background is. And I'm going to show you that right now, so check this out. So what you guys are seeing is Sharp Rob on stage with the Crane Crushers performing live in Vegas, but I want you guys to take a look behind him and see uh, something very interesting. Who's that? Who's that little man back there? Who's that confused little cringe box? Do you guys recognize him? I do. I recognize him. <laughs> Uh-oh. Looks like these two may have known each other back in the day go. Uh, excuse me. Vago. And so uh, this is Bootleg Kev DJing for Sharp when he was a rapper. And this is the same DJ, uh, the same bootleg Kev that's sitting across the table from him asking, did you ever rap? Did you ever, were you ever, did you ever try to be a rapper? And Sharp's like, yeah, I did it for like a, a little bit, probably like five years, nothing, nothing major. It was a release. I did it because it was just a release. Uh, I, I have to disagree. I think that these two go way back. And so for them to talk to each other, like this is like a genuine conversation. He's interviewing him. He wants to know more about him. Why don't you guys reminisce a little bit? Why don't you guys reminisce about your times in Vegas performing live on stage in front of all these thousands of fucking people? Look at the crowd, by the way, uh, that they're performing for. That's the best part. So uh, Bootleg Kev has DJed for Sharp and the Crane Crushers. Okay, so somebody needs to call Vago at this point because this, is, to me, is disingenuous lie. This, to me, is Bootleg Kev making his audience believe something that's not true. Okay, that's, to me, it should be illegal. Okay, that's why I was elected sheriff, to make these types of busts. So, uh, you know, the really weird little guy, a little evil little villain, in my opinion, that nobody should trust, nobody should be uh, supporting, everyone should uh, be aware of this. And I'm so glad that I could bring this to you guys' attention in such, a, in such a way to show you guys so that you guys can understand, Okay. And the cringe does not stop there. I want to show you guys some clips of uh, bootleg Kevin Sharp talking about the strip clubs and the brothels. Okay. And the, the, I had a huge, this was really disagreeable. It was really, it made my stomach turn over to think about bootleg Kev inside of a strip club. Watch this. All time great. Give me your top four Vegas strip clubs of all time. Open, closed. I'll throw one out first. Let's go with strip hop. That strip hop era was special. At Seamless. It was at like, was it? Seamless. Right there off of Arville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember it. Everybody used to slide through that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. well, Franny was DJing. Yeah. I remember that motherfucker. Yeah. It was cool. Rick Ross and them used to slide yeah, through there. Yeah. They used to pop. I remember that joint. Um, Palomino's a classic. Palomino's a classic in the north. It's out north. It's yeah. right there next to a little small spot named Chica's Bonitas. Oh, yeah. That sits right next to it, I believe. A little small. Okay, so it does seem like Sharp knows the Las Vegas metro area like the back of his fucking hand. Uh, very fascinating. I wonder if he knows uh, San Diego in the same way. And what a off-putting, I mean, give me your top four strip clubs of all time. And then he's like, he's like leading the conversation. He's like... Give me your uh, top four uh, strip clubs of all time. And then he starts rattling them off because Sharp's like, what? Strip club? What the fuck? Like, this is a fucking weirdo question. I don't want to be talking about this shit. I'm, you know, he, Sharp wants to distance himself from the Vegas talk. 
All right, so let's uh, keep going. Hold Spearmint Rhino is probably like the Spearmint Rhinos. Spearmint Rhino, is, good wings. Is cool. That's yeah, like the tourist cool. spot. You know, um, I used to always, I always used to love me some Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse back the in the day, one. or the, the new one? one. The, the new, new one. one. Yeah, yeah. the new one's Not actually the one got that good was sushi. On industrial. The new one's got good sushi. And that went on industrial for years. Was that the one under the bridge? Yeah, under the bridge. They tried to reopen right it and then it went industrial. Yeah, and then something fucking happened and they, yeah, they were weighed with it. What else? Um, Hustlers cool, I guess. Hustlers solid. Around. They're solid. They're all right. That's I like the little that. rooftop shit. That the shit rooftop was, cool. was a vibe when they first <laughs> opened and they were throwing parties <laughs> yeah. and shit. I think Baby Bash cool. hosted some shit up there. Yeah, that's the just cool. The rooftop was a vibe. Yeah. 100%. Did you ever... Um, uh, bootleg Kev knows every single strip club in the state of Nevada, it would seem. Holy shit. He knows their food. He knows the menu of the food. I mean, if he's going to come out and say that he only knows all this because he DJed, I find that incredibly hard to believe. You DJ every fucking strip club in the area and eat their food? Holy shit, this guy's weird. This guy, to me, seems like a sexually deviated scoundrel. Okay, and this next part is, it, it, I mean, watch this. This next part, it doesn't stop. The first time like I had, this. like, a, any sort of interaction with pimps in Vegas, there's a place next to Little Darlings that, I don't know if it's there anymore. It used to be called Kelly's Casino. Yeah, Kelly's. You know Kelly's? Part, I was there for many years. Yo, Kelly's is I was a, there. They tore it down. It ain't there no more. Kelly's is a wild place, bro. It ain't there no more. I've seen a lot of crazy shit yeah, go down there. so I remember, because my homie, one of my best friends. Was Nancy working when you were up in there? Older <laughs> white lady. Probably, so... Uh, She's there for years. One of my so best friends. Kelly's. So one of my one of my close <laughs> homies at the radio station was my boy Ron Dizzle, and Ron was not 21. So yeah. the only place I could take him was fucking Little Darlings, and we were fucking with a couple of bitches at Little Darlings. Mm. So I used to be, they'd let him in Kelly's Casino, though. Yeah. So we used to just go get shit-faced to Kelly's Casino with a bunch of pimps and hoes, and then fucking yeah. walk, over, walk across the parking lot and go yeah. to fucking Little D's. It was, it was definitely a, a cool life. Excuse me? Uh, so bootleg Kev just said on camera that he used to frequent this place known for, uh, having ladies of the night walking around. You know what I mean? You catch my drift and he's like blanketing the situation by saying that, you know, he's insulating himself from any wrongdoing by saying, Oh, it was the only place shitty enough to serve underage people. And I was hanging out with underage people. We had to go to the, to the place where the street walkers hang out. Uh, sure thing, bro. So Bootleg Kev is a connoisseur of the adult entertainment slash brothel scene in Vegas, which is disturbing. And, uh, you know, I, I can't really, um, say that he's not a weirdo at this point. So, uh, you know, I, th there's really not much else I can say about him except that he's under investigation by me for the remainder of time. And I also want to point out he has a, a Vlad TV interview coming up and that could mean trouble. Okay, because he's filled with lies, in my opinion, and I hope Vlad asks him about some of this stuff. And Vlad TV is not a big Bootleg Kev fan either, it would seem, because he says that Bootleg Kev lied on him and said something disingenuous. Big surprise, right? Said something dishonest about Vlad, and Vlad calls him out on this. I want to show you. Watch. Because they sent me, because he, he had mentioned that before, right? He, I think, with a, a Rory interview, he talked about how he had reached out to me and uh, I, I, I turned him down. I had asked him to be on my podcast like last year, early last year. Uh, he called me out of respect and explained to me why he didn't want to come on the show. And, it, and, and, and uh, this went viral because I went on back on Fig and talked about it. it did, I don't, viral. They made a clip out of it yeah. and it, it did whatever it did. And I literally was like, you know, he called me and he was like, hey, Kev, like, you know, I'm looking at what you're doing and like, it's cool, but like, you know, your numbers just ain't there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm like, hey, bro, I get it. It's all good. Like, we gonna spin the block. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't take that personal. I wasn't even tripping. That's how I feel about most of that stuff. It's like, okay, if it's not right now, we'll see you because we're gonna be here. Yeah, and I would, it wasn't even me saying it like, like that i was just like no nah, i get it bro like you're a busy guy and you i think he has kids you know I, I don't know for sure but like he's got businesses he's running so for him to take out time from his businesses it's got to make sense for him and um oh, okay he was just starting out <laughs> he had almost like a brand new youtube channel and i'm like if you're gonna tell the story just tell it in the right context yeah you know you had a brand new youtube channel and you reached out and i'm like yo listen like not not right now but just stay in touch with me and we'll do it later. And one, at the end of our conversation last night, I was like, you know, after the new year, hit me up and we'll, we'll put it together. That's dope. And you I know? would love to see that. Yeah. And I think that like 99% of the time, people will just ignore you. Mm. They just won't answer your text or they'll change the, the topic or whatever else. But I'm like, yo, I see what you're doing. I respect this. So I just want to keep it 100 with you and, and explain to you why I'm turning you down right now. And it's not a no, it's just a not right now. 
And, you know, since that time, he's built up and gotten a lot of big guests and got more followers and more traction. And I'm like, all right, cool. At this point, it does make sense. Wow. So Vlad's calling bootleg Kev out here for being disingenuous and spinning the truth. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm not the only one who's got an issue with the way bootleg Kev puts a spin on things and stuff like that. And I also want to point out, Vlad says, yeah, it wouldn't make sense for me to go on such a stupid ass show that gets no views. That goes back to my theory of how the fuck is uh, bootleg Kevin getting guests when he's got no views. You know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, he's got uh, bootleg Kev's show is so pathetic. I mean, Vlad's been on China Mac's show. He's on the Danza Pro. I've never even heard of the Danza Project. Shout out to the Danza Project. He goes on smaller shows. He's not like a snob. So for him to snub bootleg Kev, you really got to fucking suck balls to, to, to get turned down. So I just wanted to point that out. And, uh, and th- he says that they're going to do an interview. Vlad says, yeah, it makes sense. Now we're going to do an interview. I just hope Vlad's the one asking the questions, and I hope Vlad puts him on the fucking barbecue about this whole uh, Sharp interview that was a complete sham. I also would like him to ask Bootleg Kevin about his ability to get guests without having any sort of talent or having any sort of push, you know, as far as getting views and being a personality. I want to know, everyone wants to know how Bootleg Kev is managing to have such a shitty show that does such bad numbers, but still gets big interviews. It shouldn't be a mystery. Okay. It should be widely known how he got his opportunities and how, and who's putting these together. Like who, who does he know? Who, how did he get planted into this situation? Because it doesn't add up. Bootleg Kev is devastatingly fucking cringe and bad at what he does. So it just doesn't make sense. I want answers and he will remain under my investigation until uh, I see fit. So with that, I'm so glad that you guys have finished this video. I'm so glad that you guys have liked the video and commented. I enjoy reading the comments and uh, with that, I'll see you guys on the next one.